Happy Sabbath and good morning everybody on this special Sabbath service um, that we have gathered together um, to worship. Um, we are calling it um, a special Sabbath telling the story of Jesus. Everybody is so busy running around getting presents ready. But we are here to give praise and to tell the story of our Savior, how he came to this earth, how he was born, raised, and how he came to redeem us. So let us all join together and praise him, and let's all listen or join us and sing his story together. Our first hymn is, O oh, Come All You Faithful. Oh. 
52. Tell me the story Tell of Jesus. The story.
Let's pray. Gracious Father, we thank you today for this Sabbath day. We thank you for the blessing that you give it to us this week. We ask to continue blessing each one here today and those ones that could be allowed to be here that you bless them too. We thank you. We ask those things in your name. Amen. Well, good morning to everyone. You might see it. Buenos dias. Good morning. Feliz sábado. Bon show. Bon show. Okay. Feliz. Hablo en francés. Yo hablo un poquito de español. Happy Sabbath to everyone. Um, I hope that you feel comfortable to be in the house of the Lord today. And I want to remind you, like I say every Sabbath, if you have a phone, please keep it quiet. He knows your number. He will call you. <laughs> and, um, you know, um, it's amazing how we stand today here after we gone through this difficult this year. But we here. We here and we'll be here forever. Because somebody in heaven is fixing this. Amen. You know, the, I know it's difficult, uh, but I believe that it's going to be better. It's going to be better. Don't lose your faith because he has a plan for us. You know, um, I, I, it's amazing that, that, that way back when we opened the church, um, it was concerned, you know, about this. But today uh, we, um, we're going to celebrate. We're going to celebrate at Christmas. And before us doing that, you know, we, we know used to go, um, and I miss that, to go say happy Sabbath to any, everyone and give you a nice hug and welcome. But we share that. We do it this way. We say happy Sabbath to everyone. Reach your hands and say happy Sabbath. Happy Feliz Sábado. Bon share. Very soon, very soon, we, we don't have to do in that, I believe that. The, today, we, um, we gonna have a, a beautiful Christmas program that we're going to prepare for you. Um, and I want to say thank you, something, you know. It, it is hard to put a program, no matter what. Could be small, could be bigger. It, it's very hard, you know. And I want to say thank you to each one, those person that be involved in this music program, you know. The, the effort, the talent that they have in behalf of the church or the pastor, we want to say thank you to you because it's no easy. But I want to say thank you to, to, to the, the leader of this. Um, I'm going to say her name right today, Daphne. And I said, right, thank you very much because I know it's no easy for you too to put this with those people. And we thank you, you, and God bless you for all the effort you're doing for the church. You know, um, what, is, what is the saying of Christmas? What is it, you know? Christmas is the celebration of the birth of Christ. Amen. The celebration, okay? And time for, it's time for us to understand the lesson from Jesus and reflect on them. Jesus brought a new religion Basis on love and a vision of a God who is full of compassion and forgiveness, and vision and doing everything with a position, mindset, and from a peace of love. I hope today that you enjoy this program. Now we got some announcer. Um, I have one announcement that my sister had to come here because you see all those present here. Thank you, each one of you that put your gift to somebody else in need. My sister can explain to you. Good morning, church. Good morning. I um, want to thank you, each and every one who has participated we, the Women Ministry of the Church, decided this year that we would reach out to our community. And so we decided to sponsor <clears throat> a family of six from Women um, Coalition. And so today we have Sierra from there. Who, could you stand, Sierra? And 
We're so thankful for her to give us the opportunity to participate. And we remember that our God is a God of kindness, of compassion, yes. and he seek for those who are in need. And we today want, I would like to thank you on behalf of Women Ministry for your generosity, for coming out and going beyond and above, and to bless this special family. So thank you so very much. Would you like to say something? hear me. I just want to say thank you all so much for sponsoring this family. It is truly going to be a huge blessing as, you know, they've struggled in their personal life with abuse and they've now got a family of five that they're raising on their own and the troubles aren't stopping this year and this is just going to be a huge blessing to the family with working with Women's Center and just thank you guys so much. I'm so happy to be here and see your beautiful program and receive these gifts for our clients. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, you very much, because I know that you're doing a wonderful job, too. Any, any announcement? Uh, uh, Elder, do you have any announcement or anything else that, that we had to know? Um, I, I got to say something quick. Uh, remember the offering of Christmas. So what we won't do, him, if you have your envelope, right? In time of the offering, you, you can walk here and place your offering at the tree. But what you're going to do, him, we are doing with the corona, the distance, <laughs> the corona. So, so yeah, that's the way we're going to do it. So if you have your offering, you, you're welcome to come in uh, when somebody come in here. You walk the other side or the other side. So any anything else, uh, Elder? Good morning, Saints. If I would say one thing, if I would have one announcement this morning, it would be that when we leave out of here, please move straight through the foyer. You know, on the other side, you can stand and talk a little bit. But, you know, uh, when, this, when we originally set this thing, we said that we would leave out here and go directly to our vehicles and leave. But, you know, this thing, it, it, it affects, it is effective mostly on the inside. So we need to get ourselves outside the building. Just keep walking so that, you know, whoever come along, I mean, if you don't want a social distance, I, I, I can't tell you what to do. But please, just go outside the building. We want to be safe here. We want our church to stay open. And if we don't follow protocol, we're going to face some difficulties. It's not all over yet. You know, it seems like it's coming to an end, like they have some plans to help us out. But until then, let us do what we're supposed to do so we can stay in our church. I, I, I like coming every Sabbath. <laughs> Honest. When I was had to stay home every week, I, I was sad. But now I'm able to come here. I want to follow protocol if it's going to keep us safe. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Sorry about that. We now have a special music by Sister Esther. Amen. Good morning. Happy Sabbath again. Hope you're blessed. Thank you. 
could it be this baby in my arms sleeping now so peacefully the son of god the angel said how could it be Lord, I know he's not my own, not of my flesh, not of my bone. Still, Father, let this baby be the son of my love. Father, show me where I fit into this plan of yours. How can a man be a father to the Son of God? Lord, for all my life I've been a simple carpenter. How can I raise a king? How can I raise a king? He looks so small, his face and hands so fair. When he cries, the sun just seems to disappear. But when he laughs, it shines again. Could it be? Father, show me where I fit into this plan of yours. How can a man be a father to the Son of God? Lord, for all my life, how can I raise a king? How can I raise a king? How could it be this baby in my arms? Sleeping now so peacefully the Son of God said how could it be how could it be Uh, we most uh, enjoy coming here. Now. If you have any special prayer requests, I have one. Actually, I got two. I got one bad and one good. But I'm going to say the bad, bad first. I have a sister in Panama Canal. She had the COVID. Let's pray for her. She's doing okay. She's better. Now also the good one I'm gonna be uh, 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 my son will have a, his first baby. <laughs> He'll be a grandfather. Amen. Amen. Friday in July, I believe, with his wife and um, let's pray for him and his wife. Anybody else got something that I need to pray this time? Yes, ma'am.
grande. here today. I think my mic is on already. <laughs> you can turn me off until, well, let me talk. Well, she's not here today. Um, uh, one day earlier in the week, my daughter had been over visiting us and her little granddaughter, and she got her in a car about nine o'clock at night, and she was headed back home to her house, and Soon she pull out, got on the street. A young lady turned into the road that we live on, and she was coming down. She was moving pretty fast, and she said she was trying to stop her kids from acting up in the car, and took her eyes off the road one moment, and she just slammed it into my daughter. I mean, I mean, that was a trauma. And this morning. Um, she's been going back and forth to the hospital and uh, carrying a little baby along with her. Y'all said a little CC she was in here? Yeah, she was in the car. And um, they need our prayers. My wife is going today to take my daughter back to the doctor for some medications and stuff. They're having a little difficult time. You Normally, she would be here. She loves it here. So we want to remember her in prayer. Anybody, anybody else? Well, you have, yes ma'am? possible. Gracious Father, we hear all those requests. I ask in your name, each one of those requests that you hear today here in this church, my Lord, that you touch them, whatever situation, the accident, the COVID, Whatever the situation, the family, my Lord, that you touch each one of those persons, that you heal him because you are the doctor. And we come to you to say thank you because out of you, we can do nothing. We ask to, to continue blessing us. And we thank you that today we celebrate the birth of Son Jesus. We thank you because we hear it's Sabbath through this COVID. And we will be here, here, my Lord, until you coming back for us. We ask to bless our pastor. He went on vacation. Bless him and his family. We thank you, my Lord, because uh, we know that this is going to be over. There's many people that are going through difficult financial. Difficult was Thanksgiving. Difficult is Christmas time with the financial. But we know, my Lord, that the time's coming. Amen. The time's coming that this is going to be over. And we thank you for that, my Lord. I pray for each one today here, my Lord. 
each one and pray for those one that could made it today too, my Lord, that you bless them. That today, that when we live in this place, my Lord, we live in better. Bless the the family that is away, they planning to travel, whatever. Today we have a speaker. You know, a speaker Ben, Elder Ben. I want you to give it the string that he needs today, my Lord. That everything that comes from his mouth comes from you, my Lord, and yes, goes yes. straight to our heart, my Lord. So that message is help us to be better. Blessing him, we ask those things in your name, my Lord. Amen. Continue with the program now. At this time, we're going to have a reading from Elder Kick. Oh, the lady. Sorry. Happy Sabbath. I'm not here to give a sermon, but I'd like to just say, I thank the Lord for his mercy. I thank him for giving me strength through all this COVID. I know who I believe in. I believe in Jesus Christ, the son of the risen Lord and Savior. He who knew no sin became sin for me that I might be made the righteousness of God in him. And I give thanks today that he can afford me another day to bring praise to him. There's a song in the air. There's a star in the sky. There's a mother deep prayer. And the baby's low cry, and the star raises farewell, the beautiful sing for the manger of Bethlehem, cradles a king. There's a tumult of joy for the wonderful birth. For the virgin sweet boy is the Lord of the earth. And the star rings his farewell, the beautiful sing. For the manger of Bethlehem cradles a king. In the light of that star lies the maid, the ages emperor. And the song from afar has swept over the world. Every heart in its flame and the beautiful sing in the homes of the nations that Jesus is King. We rejoice in the light and we echo the song that comes down through the night from the heavenly throne. I will shout to the lonely, the 
have angels been, and we greet them in the cradle, the Savior and King. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sister, for the music. Well, I think um, at this time we have Elder Kid. Now, this is through the King James Version, this is the New International Version. So take your choice, but I'm gonna go with this one. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in the manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace goodwill toward men and this my brothers and sisters is the good news Silent night.
but this is time for everybody. We're going to do in the Hignum 122. All right, join us in this one. Hark the herald, angels sing. So let's all sing like angels. <laughs> What about you? Amen. You got blessing? We have blessing. This is Christmas. This is time to enjoy this time of celebration, compassion, give. At this time, we're going to have a sister, Linda. This is Jesus' message to all of us. If you look for me at Christmas, you won't need a special star. I'm no longer in Bethlehem. I'm right there where you are. 
you may not be aware of me amid the celebrations. You'll have to look beyond the stores and all the decorations. But if you take a moment from your list of things to do and listen to your heart, you'll find I'm waiting there for you. You're the one I want to be with. You're the reason I came. And you'll find me in the stillness as I'm whispering your name. Thank you, sister. That was beauty. Today we have somebody here at home, at this house. It's somebody that we know for a long time, and um, we thank you that she's in the house of the Lord today to doing some special music for us. Amen. Shirley Hanson and her daughter, Amen. thank you for being here today. Merry Christmas. Do you hear me now? Yeah. All right. So wonderful to be here. And we've got Savina on the keys. And we're so thankful for what Jesus did for us coming to this earth and ministering to us, dying on the cross, raising again so we could be free from our sins. stars are brightly shining it is the night of our dear Savior's birth long lay the world in sin and air pining till he appeared and our soul felt its word. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. By his cradle we stand. So led by the light of a star sweetly gleaming, here come the wise men from Orient land. The king of kings lay thus in lowly manger in all our trials born to be our friend fall on your knees oh hear the angel voice was born thank you Lord
Truly he taught us to love one another. His law is love and his gospel is peace. Chains shall he break for the slave is our brother and in his name all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy in grateful chorus raise we let all within us praise his holy name fall on your knees oh hear the angel voices oh night divine oh night when Christ was born. Oh, night divine. Oh, night. Oh, night divine. Thank you, Lord. sons and daughters did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new this child that you deliver will soon deliver you mary did you know that your baby boy will give sight to a blind man mary did you know your baby boy would calm the storm with his hand did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels try when you've kissed your little baby then you've kissed the face of god oh mary did you know
shall enjoy. This is this is what God has for God today here. And um, and uh, it's amazing um, uh, that she's here today. You know, you must be here for a long time, and um, but she's here. And, well, this time we gonna have the offer. Happy greetings to everybody on this Sabbath. I hope everybody's being blessed um, by the program. It's, it's been very nice so far, and I, I'm enjoying myself um, really much. Um, the tithes and offerings, um, I want you to keep in mind, just a few thoughts here, is not a man-ordained um, requirement, but God-ordained this, okay? It is to test the motives of our hearts so make sure as you are looking at the means in which God has blessed you with that with a grateful heart you return notice I didn't say pay I don't like to use that word pay I like to use the word return what he has said is sacred unto him okay and that's the tithes and the offerings and remember that the tithes don't stay in the church they go to the conference to support the gospel in that mission field and the offerings stay here okay you know when I'm at my desk and you know I get paid every two weeks and you know I think about what's going on in the world and it's really a blessing that this pandemic has not affected my employment and they consider what I do very essential. I'm like a first responder where I work. And, um, and as soon as I look at that computer and I see that employer has digitally processed my um, wages in that at bank account, I go before the end of that day, before I leave that job, I go on that website and I return faithfully to what belongs to the Lord. And, and, and I am, um, because to me, the tithes and offerings represent that I have health. I have the mental awareness and the mental strength to actually perform a job. And I am so grateful, you know, to the Lord to um, have brought me this far. And I'm not fighting for my life in an ICU bed or, you know, things of that nature. So from my understanding, they're going to be doing this a little different. Um, they're bring, they're having you return your tithes and offerings um, and put it up on the tree. This isn't the tree of life, you know, but I guess it's the tree here that they, they're asking for, but we all want access to that true tree of life one day. And so just remember um, God's method of starving the selfishness of the heart is to give. Okay, and it is easier for you to get self out of the way if you don't have a selfish heart. Okay, so keep that in mind as we now bow our heads and I ask the Lord's blessing over our tithes and offerings. Lord, we want to thank you for bringing us all here. It's a blessing that none of us here today is in a hospital, and it's such a blessing. You know, with thousands and thousands and thousands of people, you know, fighting for their lives, it's just a privilege that you have looked down upon us and you kept this church open and you are truly, truly um, amazing in your grace and your mercy as you have been protecting all of us. And so we want to return to you what is rightfully yours and we pray, Lord, that as it is being used, that it reach other people who need to hear the light and truth of God's word is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. stairs I'll take them from you or um, and if you don't have them prepared yet and then um, later on you 
still have the box in the rear, okay, where you can drop your um, offerings and tithes in there as well, okay? there anyone else okay our scripture reading this morning is going to be read from the new king james version okay and um, it's found in galatians chapter 4 and it is verse 4 but i'm also going to um, include verse 5 in this as well since it's a continuation of that thought but when the fullness of time had come god sent forth his son born of a woman born under the law to redeem those who were under the law that we might receive the adoptions as sons and I'm going to add has also daughters okay so may the blessing of the Lord is always upon your heart as you meditate on these words and thank you for being here and we welcome all of our guests and those who are visiting for the first time and we really appreciate you coming here and, and all the people who did the special music I also want to um, extend out a, another gratitude of thanks um, I know it's hard to put a program like this together and um, but I really appreciate it and I'm pretty sure um, everybody in this church does as well okay so amen amen we're going to have a special music. After the special music for Sister Esther, we're going to have Elder <clears throat> Ben with the sermon. Shepherds gaze in wonder While angel voices sing This night of nights has come And brought the world The long-awaited King 
The earth is filled with gladness Yet heaven send away For heaven's eyes can see He was born to die for me know you were born to die it must have broken God's heart for the future he could see Yet he formed the hands and feet Knowing one day they'd be nailed to a tree So all the world could know him A gift came from above for God so loved the world that he gave his only son Jesus baby Jesus with a tear of love in your No, you were born to die. So, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, for your gift of eternal life. My Jesus, Jesus, cause for me, Good morning, saints. You know what? Um, I don't like it up here very much. <laughs> Could I come down there? I can still social distance, couldn't I? Yeah, we were down there, we were praying. Just make sure I stay over here. Mm. Just want to thank everybody for the beautiful music, for the poems and everything. I, I truly been enjoying myself. How about you, huh? Yes, man. I, 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 was, I, I was just bathing. Hmm? I was bathing in the enjoyment, and it was wonderful. Mm. Mm. Besides, you all look very, very good. Hmm? 
You know, I like, I like Christmas. It's a time, you know, especially when I was working, you could get a time off and be, be with your family, huh? Spend time with your family, eat some good food. I don't want to leave that out. Hmm? The holidays, my wife, she just, she just go all out and fix all kind of good food. I like it, Christmas time. Anyway, you know, our pastor has been gone for about um, almost a month now, huh? He took a vacation. He deserved it, right? Everybody deserves a little vacation. And um, I'm quite sure his, it's on the downhill now. He'll probably be coming back to see us pretty soon anyway. But we've been holding up very well here in his absence. Just want to thank you all for, for, I guess I'm the head elder here now, so I just want to thank you all for your support. And I hope I've been doing all right. Okay, it's time for a little sermonette. I didn't think things were going to move so fast. I saw a long bulletin here, but I guess things went pretty well. Um, the title of the message this morning, um, a little, The Little Town of Bethlehem. Our scripture this morning, King James Version, I love it. Thank you, Robert. But this is not our, our scripture. Our scripture is Galatians 4, 4, right? <coughs> hmm? Galatians, Robert, please. Yes. I saw this text. Well, my mouth like I had committed to memory. I had this text memorized a long time. Uh, and I thought I would hear somebody use it, you know, for the birth of Christ. Over time, I never heard anybody use it. I was wondering what was happening. Spirit of the Lord say, well, why don't you use it? So I pulled it out. And it says, but when the fullness of time was come, comma, huh? God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. Hmm? When the fullness of time was come, God sent his son. Let us pray. Father in heaven, dear Lord, it's always, dear Lord, a wonderful thing and a wonderful experience to open up your word. There's so much in there to glean, dear Lord. And we pray, dear Father, that you would be with us today open our hearts and open our minds. Allow us to be blessed through your word. Father, we're going to be careful in giving you all the honor, the glory, and the praise because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. The fullness of time. Anybody ever give any consideration uh, of what is the fullness of time? Well, let me tell you. The fullness of time represents a time when Satan believed that he had breached such a gap between God and man until God would say, with sin, until God would give him up. But at that very time when Satan believed that God would give up on man, what the Bible said he did? Sent forth his son. Isn't that amazing, huh? He said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. You could never ever weary God. Isn't that something, huh? 
It makes you think about how much he loves you, right? He'll never give you up. And the goes on to say that he was sent through a woman under the law. Hmm? Why under the law? When we fell into sin, this is where we fell, under the law. Jesus had to come under there to get us. Not, he came from a woman, not that he was a sinner. His perfect life was our redemption. His perfect life. He redeemed us from under the law. Everyone that reaches out and catch hold to him can be brought from under the law. His father except one thing, his sacrifice. Hmm? You know what? Why it took Jesus? Why Jesus? Why not one of the angels or somebody? The law is as holy as God is. It took one equal to the law to come get us. And Jesus condescended for us. Um, my next text, it, it tells us about when God informed us about what he was planning to do. Now, if this is not when the thought first began, because if we go back to where the thought, where God first had the thought, we would have to go all the way back. It, it, there we go. Jesus is called the lamb slain from the foundation. Of the world. Before the world was formed, Jesus was our lamb. But here in Genesis 15, God began to tell man what he was doing. And he says, I will put enmity between thee and the woman. What's the woman? The church. Why so many people says, well, the church didn't begin until, until Jesus came here on this earth? Huh? Seemed like the church was from the time man fell in sin. Hmm? Yeah. I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now, Satan was set to bruise the heel of the church. And, and, uh, you, you can't take that lightly, because a lick on the heel can, can be pretty rough, can it? Hmm? There's something on the heel called the Achilles tendon. Huh? You don't have to hit it very hard. You bump it, and you have a sensation throughout your entire body. Hmm? You feel it. And when Satan bumped the church, everybody felt it. That was a good analogy to, to heal. But the Bible goes on and say that now the church would do what to him? Bruise his head. Satan is not dead yet. But he have received a fatal blow. He will be dead. He's going to die from this. Now, we find out that the promise God has made, right? You know, Paul, when he was talking about in Galatians 4.4, when the fullness of time was come, everything had happened, and Paul was looking back in retrospect, trying to sh share with us what had happened. He's trying to give the Christian church a view of what God had done. But I took you back to where it initiated. Now, where is this thing going to take place at? Our next text, Robert. Gave it quite a few texts I can hope I can get through, or else I'm going to have to skip something up. But thou Bethlehem Avatar. Uh, it, it's talking about Bethlehem here. 
But let's, let's, let's go on and see what it says about Bethlehem before I, I, I tell you about Bethlehem. Though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall come forth unto me, that is, to be ruler in Israel, who is going forth have been from of old, from when? Everlasting. Who they're talking about? Talking about Jesus. That's the only thing that's everlasting. But it said, but Bethlehem, Aphetar, you know, when I, the Spirit wouldn't let me get away with just reading that and pass on by like so many people do. I, I, I wanted to know what was this Aphetar is all about. And I tell you what, as soon as I thought about that, I reached for my vine. My vine is a biblical dictionary. I wanted to look and see if it was in there. But before I got my hand to the vine, the Spirit spoke to me and said, a story to be told. Bethlehem. Is it a story to be told? I'll tell you one better than that. It is the greatest story ever told. The greatest story ever told. Hmm? Matter of fact, it goes on to talk about <laughs> um, um, that Bethlehem, it says, though thou be what? Little, huh? Let me tell you how little Bethlehem is. If it hadn't been for this story here, you would have never, ever heard of Bethlehem. There's so many uh, towns in Israel and everything that, that you've never heard of. But it had not been for this story here. You've never heard of Bethlehem. So, Bethlehem is a story to be told. By who? By everybody. By the world. Yes, there you go. Very well. Uh, Robert, okay, we found out where this thing's supposed to transpire now in Bethlehem. We need to keep our eyes on Bethlehem, right? Uh, the people of Israel, they should have kept their eyes on Bethlehem. We've got the place. We've got the the event, what else we need now? Maybe the time, how about the time? No, before we go there, there's another text I want you all to hear Ready? I have committed this one to memory too, and maybe you all should commit it to memory. It comes from Amos 3.7. Let us read it together. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he do what? He reveals it to his... When God does something, he's going to tell us about it. And he's trying to tell us about it right now. Tell us about the birth of Christ. Okay. Now maybe we can make it to the time. What's the next one? Daniel... I think I need to elaborate here a little bit. Um, it's, it's congested. Daniel. God had warned Israel for years and years that if they did not mend their ways, that he was going to allow them to be carried into captivity. Now, I'll tell you what, I don't think that just applies to Israel. Hmm? It's God's people. I think we have been receiving the same warning that Israel received. If we don't mend our ways, we're going to find ourselves drinking from a bitter 
and a more bitter, maybe even a pandemic. Hmm? So anyway, Israel did not mend their ways. Finally, the time came, and God kept his word. Will God keep his word? God calls a man by the name of King Nebuchadnezzar to come into Israel <clears throat> and take them out captivity, into captivity. For 70 years, they were supposed to just remove that nation. You know, they, they felt like God loved them so much that God would not let Anything happened to them? Do, do we feel like that? Like we are under the protection of God. Won't, God won't let nothing happen to us. But I tell you what, if you think about it, your little child, if he comes up and do something wrong, what you need to do? Give him a little, huh? And make him go stand in a corner, right? A little while, huh? You need to smack him. So God... King Nebuchadnezzar came into Israel and he took the entire nation. Matter of fact, to show his power, he came in and took the school of the prophets. <laughs> that was their pride right there. They thought he would never allow the king. But in the school of the prophets, there was a young man by the name of Daniel who went down into Babylon and his job down there was to keep the records down there. And they were to stay 70 years. Daniel went down there at the age of 15 years old, knowing that the word of God says, I've given thee three scores and ten. Daniel would believe that he could live the 70 years in captivity and hold God to his word. You know, God wants us to hold him to his word. He wants us to. Hmm? After the 70 years was up, Daniel came to God. He said, time is up. And it appears as if God wasn't going to stick to his word because the children of Israel did not do what they were supposed to do while they were in captivity. But did God know that they weren't going to do? He knew what they was going to be about? Hmm? But if God says something, he means it, right? Daniel, he said 9-1. This is what Daniel, how Daniel intended to handle the situation, what he did. The first thing he did, let us read. In the first year of Darius, the son of Ahuja, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. Nine two. It says, "In the first year of the reign, I Daniel understood by the by the numbers of the of the years whereof the words of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish seventy years in desolation of Jerusalem." Daniel's first thing he did was went and checked the word of God to make sure that was that, that was what God had said in the beginning. Make sure he wasn't looking at something wrong. God can't be wrong, but we can, can't we? And Daniel went and assured it. And soon after that, Daniel fell on his knees and prayed. Church, I'm trying to tell you about the disappointments in your life that you think where well, God has failed you, how you should handle those. And he prayed. Daniel 9, 23. What happened? <coughs> At the beginning of thy supplication, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show that thou art greatly beloved, therefore understand the matter and consider the vision. Seven new weeks are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city to finish transgressions, 
to make an end of sin, to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal of the vision, and the prophecy, and to what? You know, they're saying that these prophecies were so direct. They were so, what, precise. Until, if the children of Israel had studied them and followed them, that they could have stood on the banks of John, or Jordan River with John the Baptist pointing and saying, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Now, this doesn't just nail down his birth, but this nail down his life and ministry on this earth. God gave us the time of the event. I'm going back home. I'm messing around a little bit. And I'm going to close this up. Our next text said we were going back to Galatians 4.4. 4. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman, made under the law. We're going to take this again, but we're going in slightly a different direction with it. Because we are at the time now for the event. Our next one, Robert. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into the city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin name was Mary. And the angel came into her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutations this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. How many of us here today would like to hear God say something like that to us? Huh? That you've found favor with God. How many of us would like to hear it? Hmm? Well, let me tell you something. If you're sitting here today under the sound of my voice, guess what? You have found favor with God. Because God woke you up this morning, whispering to you here, get up, come on out. Come out to worship service. We're going to have a wonderful time praising the Lord. The Spirit, you found favor with God. Hmm? I was looking at, this is a whole story here, and I'm supposed to be doing just a little sermon now. I'm going to be finished pretty soon. But um, I had, looking at the chapter, there was two things in there that I felt that I really need to address, and this is one of them right here. That, that, that you have found favor with God. You need, to, you, need, you need to spend some time maybe this week right here. This is the season for it. Sit down and look at this chapter. Dig into it. Luke was doing real good here with this. Hmm? Now the first thing is, I want you to know that you have favor with God. Like Mary. Like Mary. Now as the story go forth, you find out that the angel said some things to Mary. Say, you shall conceive and be with, and, and, and you shall have a child, 
and his name shall be called Jesus. And Mary replied to the angel, saying, how can I have a child when I have never been with a man? And the, and the angel went on to tell Mary that the Holy Spirit will overshadow you and you will conceive and you will have a son named Jesus. You know, Mary was to bear a son in her womb. But church, that's not all Jesus wants to do for us, is he? He wants us to, he wants to, he wants to be conceived, church, by all of us. He wants, he wants to, us to conceive him in his heart, in our hearts. Hmm? We, he, he, he wants to bear his fruits, his life, in all of our hearts. Not just Mary. That's what he was coming to do. And when Mary realized that what Jesus wanted of her, you know, she was terrified when, 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 when the angels show up. But it didn't take him long to calm all of her fears. Hmm? They calmed her fears so much until, where we at now, Robert? 36 to 38? And behold, it starts off talking about something else. Behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her. She's been pregnant for six months. And it said, who was called barren? She was barren. For with God, nothing shall be what? Impossible. And Mary said, behold, the handmaiden of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed. How many of us here at church now are willing to be like Mary? Hmm? Just to tell God to be it unto me according to thy word. This is what God wants to do. Jesus wants to, he, he was born through Mary, but he wants to be rebirthed in all of us. And he wants us to, to, to um, declare, Lord, be it unto me as your word says. We go into our last text this, this morning. Takes us into, you know, I missed something <laughs> back when I was telling you about Daniel and, his, and the children of Israel released. I just have to go back for a minute. There was a king by the name of Cyrus. Now, the, um, King Nebuchadnezzar had taken the children of Israel into captivity. And by the time the 70 years was up, another his grandson was on the throne by the name of what? Belteshazzar, you know that name? And God had to do some things to him. But he would have never released the children of Israel. So God raised up a king of the Medes and the Persians by the name of Cyrus and allowed Cyrus to go into Babylon and just rip the children of Israel out of his hands hmm? and release them to come home. Now, let's go to the end of our story here. It says, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxation was first made when Cyrene was the governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up to Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, and the Judea unto the city of David, which is called what? Bethlehem. Because he was of the house of the lineage of David to be taxed with Mary, his spouse also wife. You know, I, I, I'm doing a sermon that, and I didn't give you all, all of the details that was, that, that you need to 
better understand this situation. But I believe you all being Seventh-day Adventists, you all understand a lot of this stuff anyway. Anyway, what had happened? What had happened is that Augustus Caesar, he had placed a man by the name of uh, Cyrenus over the territory of Syria, which was pretty next door to the children of, uh, of the land of Israel. And while he was there, he was endowed with great wisdom how to deal with the tax situation. He made sure that everybody come to be taxed. He, he had a census. The census, I'm thinking, would help Rome know a projection, an idea of what their next year's income would be. Because they would know how many people in the household. You know what happens in a household today? I tell you, the biggest ripoff in this country right here is taxes. I know some people who, who didn't even work a week, get paid $100,000 back in taxes because they cheat the IRS, they know how to do it. And this was happening probably to Rome in their day. But this, Cyrenus, uh, he came up with a way that if you was going to get an exemption, then you and your wife had to be there to sign the paper saying that um, this is how many in your household. You had to have proof. And when Augustus Caesar found out that, that um, Cyrenus had done this, the following year, he extended his territory. He liked what he did. And this thing brought Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem for taxes. You know, scholars argue all the time. They will tell you right now, because they don't know the Bible like we know the Bible, that there's no way Mary, in her condition, should have been traveling. I think it was about 90 miles they had to go. And she was about to have, go into labor. Now, you know, looking back in retrospect, as we look and see things today, a woman pregnant, there's a whole lot of things could be happening. The baby could be breached, could be stillborn, could be an unbiblical strangulation. So many things could be happening to a baby. And it wasn't so safe back in those days to do that. So they don't believe that Mary would have been compelled to come because of taxes. Well, that's not the only reason Mary was coming. There's another reason, and we heard it. Hmm? What was the reason? Because what? She said it. Say it again. The prophecy had already pointed out where the baby was going to be born at. The Bible can't lie. The word of God can't lie. Miss White, she places like this here. She said, just like God had used Cyrus, to go into Babylon and take the children of Israel out and release them. She said, here God was again using Augustus Caesar to bring the son of David home to the city of David to be born. This was the work of God. Had to happen. It had been prophesied by Michael many, many years ago. And it took place. Um, I want to close this out today. Robert, look for the little song. There's only about two verses I'm going to sing. God, he wants to be reversed in our hearts. You know, each one of us are kind of like a, I entitled this message this morning, Bethlehem, because we are a type of Bethlehem. Jesus was born in Bethlehem. But he wants to be reborn where? In our hearts. Yes. 
makes us the type of Bethlehem. Now, we can either allow him to be reborn in our hearts. There's another little portion to the story that I didn't mention. When Mary and Joseph was coming to the city, you remember what happened? They stopped at an inn, right? Huh? And what did the people tell them? There's no more room at the inn. So either we tell Jesus, there is no more, there's no room at the inn, or we allow him to be reborn in our hearts. That's what he wants. That's the message. Hope I didn't keep you too long. Are we ready, Robert? Thank you. song. Yes, stand.
Father in heaven, dear Lord, we just want to say thanks for this wonderful privilege to be here today, dear Lord. And we just want to thank you for the program, dear Lord, and all those that participated, dear Father. We also ask, Lord, that you remember us in a special way. Help us to realize how much Christ wants to be reborn in each of us, dear Lord. He wants to live out his life in us, dear Lord. He wants to give us a victory, dear Lord, that we could never get apart from him. And we pray, dear Father, that we surrender, that we allow him to come in and work. We know he's coming soon, dear Lord, and we need to be ready. So, Father, we pray, dear Lord, that you would just give us a victory. And as we go through these holidays, dear Lord, let us remember, dear Father, that Jesus is the reason for the season. Amen. Let Amen. us keep our eyes on him. We just want to continue to thank and praise you. Go with us, dear Lord, as we separate this, from this place. And never, dear Lord, we pray, separate from us. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.